Hello friends and welcome back. In this lecture we will see the difference between the switch statement and FLS statements in Java. Here is our outline. First of all we will see the difference and after that we will talk about the break keyword. So how is the switch statement different than FLS statements in Java? Have a look at this code over here. As you can see we have if else ladder, right? So what happens over here? We check for the first condition. If this condition is true then we will execute this statement and the rest of the statements will not be executed because this else statement will not be executed, right? And if this condition is false, then this else statement will be executed. So we will check for the second condition. If this condition is true, we will execute this statement over here and the rest of the statements will not be executed because this else over here will not be executed and so on. Now have a look at this code over here. We are switching the value of a variable n. Now suppose that the value of n is equal to 10. So we are going to execute case 10 and all the cases below it. So when we are using if else statements, only one block of code will be executed. In other words, if this statement over here will be executed, all the other statements will not be executed, right? But when we are using the switch statement, more than one case may be executed as you already know. So now let's see how we can control the execution of cases in a switch statement. We are going to use the break keyword. Have a look at this code over here. As you can see, at the end of each case, I put the break keyword, followed by a semicolon. So this is a statement, all right? So after printing equals 10, I'm breaking. Also over here, I'm breaking and over here. So what happens when we use the break keyword inside a switch statement? Basically, when this statement is executed, we will break out from the switch statement. In other words, we will stop executing the switch statement and we will continue executing the code that is below the switch statement, all right? So suppose that n is equal to 10. So case 10 will be executed. So we are going to print equals 10 and after that we are breaking. So case 90 and case minus 3 and the default case will not be executed. So case 10 only is executed, all right? Suppose that n is equal to 90, for example. Then the case that will be executed is case 90. We will print equal 90 and then we will stop. Similarly, if n is equal to minus 3, case minus 3 will be executed. We will print equal minus 3 and we will stop. So now as you can see, the switch statement is functioning similar to an if else statement, all right? And also, if n is not equal to any of these, the default case will be executed. And since we are writing it at the end over here, we don't need to put a break statement. We will print none of the above and as you can see, the switch statement ends over here. So as I said, we don't need a break statement. So this is it. Now let's see more examples. Suppose that we have something like this. I'm putting the break over here. So if n is equal to 10, case 10 will be executed, so we will print equals 10. And we will continue executing case 90, because we didn't put a break at the end of case 10. So we will also print equals 90, and then we are going to break. Okay? Another example. Suppose that we have a break over here. And suppose that n is equal to 10. So we will print equals 10, equal 90, equal minus 3, and then we will stop. Alright? So now let me give you this assignment. Previously, we solved this exercise. We determined if a number is an even number or an odd number. I want you to write the same program using switch instead of if else. So pause the video and try to do it. So this is our first solution. In our main method, I'm creating my scanner object and I'm reading the number from the user and I'm storing it inside a variable n. Now, in order to find if n is an even number or an odd number, I need to get the remainder of the division of n by 2. Then I want to test if the value is equal to 0 or if it is equal to 1, right? So in this case, we are going to switch the value of n modulo 2. So if n modulo 2 is equal to 0, then n is an even number. So I'm printing even. And then I'm stopping. I'm breaking out of the switch statement. Now over here, I'm using the default case. So if this case was not executed, this means that n is an odd number. So I'm going to print odd. Now let's have a look at another solution. Without using the default case, I'm going to put case 1. So if n modulo 2 is equal to 1, I will print odd. And as you can see, I don't have a break statement over here because the switch statement ends over here. So I don't need a break statement. So this is it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.